All right, welcome everyone. This is the Viper Professional Training and Support Webinar. Today's date is Saturday, May the 26th, 2018. And the title of today's webinar is Watching Predictors for Great Trades. And as everyone knows that's been to our webinars or our live trading room, everything that we say and do at Viper Trading Systems is for educational purposes only. Futures trading, forex trading, any kind of financial instrument trading involves risk. Therefore, there's always risk of loss. You should only trade discretionary capital, and that is money that you can afford to lose. Nothing said in this webinar. Other webinars we have, our live trading room or anything else with Viper Trading Systems, should never be construed as trading or investment advice. And as always, everyone does trade at their own sole discretion. Any questions on the disclaimer? If not, we'll go ahead and get started. By the way, before we get started, uh, basically, uh, when people come in on trials and different things like that, you know, they, they've probably been in, you know, trading rooms that use some, I don't know, MACDs and RSIs and CCIs and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, basically the way we like to trade our stuff is boxing in. That's, that's very prominent. That's why we built the object trader. And also some of our indicators such as predictor stealth i should have named this one stealth also because i really want to talk about stealth too uh, i think we talked about predictors one other time we didn't get to stealth if i remember right so we'll, we'll make it uh you know where you'll be able to see both of them today all right now one thing real quick uh normally i go ahead and recap some of the trades that were done yesterday that were called live you know and show you how to trade them with object trader but unfortunately, Ninja's data is down this morning. So all I've got uh, market replay on is, I think, uh, uh, Wednesday and part of Thursday, if I remember right. That's that's when I downloaded it. Okay, so, uh, but it doesn't matter. You know, price is price, right? We're going to teach you how to see it, how to trade it, how to make money on it. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, one thing that I personally like to do when I'm trading is I like to diagnose my charts, okay? Uh, for instance, if, if you're a little bit of a, you know, basically a, an aggressive trader, you could actually box this in. I don't like this particular box because it's about four candles, but, you know, if you did box it in, you'd be boxing it in basically about like that, okay? That, that would be if you happen to get up at midnight, and unfortunately, I don't have a lot of replay data because of the fact that Ninja is down this morning. They're not doing any uh, historical data or anything. I can't even get my regular charts to load uh, fully. And I'm sure y'all are having that too. Okay. But anyway, um, this is a little bit bigger box than I like. You know, this is a little ambiguous as far as which way this could go. This is right at the open. Now, one thing about real quick on openings for everyone, you know, whether you think about midnight uh, like my time, you know, there's there's people that are that are trading at these hourly intervals a lot of times, you know, like we, we have traders that get up at, you know, 6 a.m. Central, do some trading, get up at 5 a.m. Central, do some trading, get up at 7 a.m. Central and do some trading. Those those hour marks are pretty good for trading. You know, that that's why we even do the little box at 9 a.m. Uh, in the room is because we want to see where the market is at that time you know, with that little box on the chart. Okay. So basically now, of course, everybody knows that just drawing a box does not take a trade, right? So you have to have object trader on the chart. So you simply go to right click and go to strategies and double click on object trader. Now real quick, I'm going to go over something too. For anybody that's new, uh, if you put on your own scripts or if you get new scripts that you have to put on or anything like that, be sure to go up in Object Trader, right up in this area, right here. See where it says Predictor MTF Parameters and Stealth MTF Parameters? That's really important that those are set at whatever you have your chart set on. In other words, your indicators on this chart need to match Object Trader. That way you won't have any duplicates of your uh, predictors. OK, so always make sure that this is in four range on predictors and four range on stealth. And when you do that, just right click and set it as your default. I run into that question more than anything that we have. And that's I've got 
more predictors than you have. My stealth, I'm kind of getting a shadow, like I'm seeing double, and that's what that is. Okay. Now, one way around it, of course, would be just don't put the indicators on your chart. You know, but then you still want to make sure this is not defaulted, because Ninja Trader defaults a uh, strategy to these uh, one-minute bars. It's just the way they've done it for years. I don't know if Ninja 8 does that or not, but I know Ninja 7 does. Okay, so always make sure you change these to 4 and 4. Also go down and make sure that you've got your targets set however you want them. Okay, and also that you've got your max contracts set. Now your max contracts is really important because, you know, for instance, if you do, you know, 7 max contracts and you turn on bar close auto, it will do seven bar closes and get you in seven contracts, okay, if that situation occurs. So, you know, make sure that this max quantity is what you want it set at. You know, we defaulted it at three, okay. I keep mine, and the reason I keep mine at seven is only because uh, I, I don't like to, you know, for instance, if I, get off of one chart that's quit running and I want to go ahead and add a contract on another one, I don't want to be limited to those three. But that's entirely up to the individual. But you got to be on the right side of the trade to even do three because three contracts in oil, to give an example, 10 ticks is $300. So, you know, 10 ticks in your favor is awesome. 10 ticks against you, not so awesome. Okay, so be sure and just set this at whatever you want it to be. You know, I'll just put it at like five today. Just right click and set it as your default. Okay. So once you do that, your object trader is set up. Now you can also display your account name. I recommend doing that simply because, you know, um, market replay and sim will have a gray background on object trader, but any other type of accounts will have a green background because there's no way for us to know if you're really creating a live account or if you've made up an account name, you see what I mean? So, you know, always make sure you display this that way, you know, you know, if you're on your true live account or if you're actually, you know, trading on maybe one that you've designed for oil or something like that. Okay. And also keep in mind that with object trader, basically we, we've got this little ebook on your member tab. And it's extremely important that everybody watches some of those videos simply because it'll walk you through all the questions that I end up answering on the phone that are in the videos. And I answer a lot, believe me. You know, but it's kind of like one of those deals, you know, read the instructions and you won't have to call in to the manufacturer. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I don't mind, you know, at all, because if somebody needs to have a question answered, I'm there for it. Okay. Because we, our main interest is that you're nicely green each and every day. We want you to be that way. All right, so I'll set Object Trader up and put it on my chart. And you can tell this in Replay. See, it says Replay 101. All right, and we're just going to go ahead and, well, since we got this box right now, we don't know what it's going to do. It did bounce off support right here. You know, see where it thrust up and it pulled back and kissed support? So, you know, basically you've got a little you know, like an A, a B, but you don't really have a C. So, you know, if I was going to be trading this, I would probably trade it, you know, either direction, simply because of the red background and everything, and it's also the middle of the night. So let's just put a region on it. Insert. Now, remember your region. You don't want to just insert it and start it cooking, because right now I see this swing, so I'm not going to get in this trade unless they do the lightning thrust, retrace thrust, right? Because that would be an A, B, C. In other words, a lightning. You know, when you look at lightning, you're basically looking at this zigzag, right? And we teach this all the time. This is not formed right here until it takes this out. So obviously when it does this, then that's breaking support. And you have a true legitimate you know, uh, downtrend as far as basically just minor bars could say it is a downtrend. To give an example, like high, low, lower, high, lower, low, right?
Pardon me. Okay, so the same thing could happen here. Thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust. See what I mean? So we'll, we'll be looking for either way. So you could actually do this. And with this being the middle of the night, I would probably only do, eh, with $5 tick, I'd probably do two. Let's see what we get. Now, I'm going to talk about predictors quite a bit today, too. But right now, we don't have a predictor. So we're going to, we're going to do like a little box in trade, see if we can get something. Now, this is an aggressive trade. Okay. Now, let me show you something here, too, before that actually fills, if it does fill. All right. Notice how this would have to close this bar above this box the way I've got it set. I've got it set long outside, long enabled. Short outside the bottom, short enabled. If I want to change this to touch, like plus, say, two to give an example, I can also do that if I want before it ever fires. Okay. Because if it, here, here's the thing about close that, that I don't particularly like. And that's the fact that a bar can close. See, that's a three tick bar right now. So four ticks is going to be right at the top of that box. So guess where you're going to get filled on this trade if you do close. If it goes up, that is. Let me show you. See, this is basically, let me get this under here. Okay, that's 12, 1626.60 and 16.27. So that's actually four bar, uh, four range. It just hadn't closed yet. Okay, so if that closes inside that box, guess what happens? You got to wait for another entire bar to go up through here. And if it just happens to be above this bar, it's going to have to go all the way up like that. And then you're already at, at resistance. See what I mean? So, you know, I, I always look at close. Basically, if, if I'm inside a box and I see that I'm going to close outside the box without having to do a full bar, I'll use the close. But if I don't, I'll just quickly change it to touch. Everybody see why on that? It, it'll play out in real time if it, if it actually is going up, that is. Let's see. We got it on touch plus two. Let's see if we get something. Still a four range bar trying to close up. Now see, notice now you had a bar. Okay, see there? If you waited for close, see I got in right here. Okay, with a touch plus two, because see, this one closed inside the box. So if you did a close instead, let's just close this out. Do a close instead, then this bar has to actually close like that. See there? So, and that one kind of popped right in. So, you know, they, they fill market orders is what they do. So technically, this didn't have to close, you know, and fill it up here because that bar kind of popped right back down the second that bar closed. Okay, everybody see what I'm talking about there? Okay, now if you were not an aggressive trader like I just did just now, just by the way we teach, where's, where's the trade on this chart if it thrusts up and comes back and kisses? And this is going to get you to figuring out a lot about predictors and, and swings. Okay, because the way I see it personally right now, is you have a low, you have a high, you have a higher low. So that's kind of telling you that they're doing like a little, you know, just like I drew just a minute ago. And now this with this one up here. So let's just let's just say we started from here instead. Okay. So let's bring this over here because this is double top. So I'll bring it like that. Okay. So where, where's the trade on this chart? Anybody? As close as you can get to it, that is. It's right here. It's right on top of that swing. Because what happens is they, they thrust up, they pull back and kiss. So, for instance, if you do take, uh, you know, a trade straight out of the box or something like this, you can always do this. You know, you can just take take money quickly. You know, like let's say that I want to, sell one of those just so I keep some money because we don't know if this is going to, you know, thrust up very much further before it comes back here. Your real trade setup is right here, not the breakout. 
but the thrust and the pullback. But about 10% of the time, you're never going to get a pullback. Now, a lot of times you will get a pullback at least into stealth, and we'll talk about that today too, because those are shallow pullbacks. And you pretty much have to take them if you're going to trade. Okay, but let's let's see if uh, we can't just get uh, another trade. This is at the top of the box, so we're going to do a long touch plus two if it comes back down to the top there. Now, it may not. We'll see. We got one on, so we don't really care. Hopefully, my data's still working. There it is. See how they do that though? They they do these lightning dances, just just like I showed on this little deal here. You know, they'll thrust up, they'll pull back. They'll thrust up, they'll pull back. They'll thrust up, they'll pull back. And it's it's constantly like that. And then see, you can actually get some decent trades by doing that. See that actually fired another trade, turned off object trader. If you wanted another one, you just simply do that again, and it, if it goes back up above it, it would fire it. Okay. Now it has to actually breach it to fire it. Now, where would your stop be on this, this trade right now? Anybody? I've got it pretty close to where it needs to be. See that swing? That's what you use for your stops is those swings. Okay, now see how we got a, a nice little trade out of there? And it thrust up and it pulled back. And it kissed basically on top of, and a lot of times it's just mid-band, and that's fine too, you know. But we did draw it. You know, we had our, our thrust, our retrace, our thrust. So in this little area here was a little sweet spot. Everybody see that? You know, just pretty much in this area, right? Right through just under the mid band is your little sweet spot. It's going to have to pop up to get us anything with three. That's one thing about three. You know, it'll take your coin back really quickly. You could be up 100 bucks. And you'll be back to square one in a heartbeat. Let's see if it goes. If not, I'll tighten my stop. But what do I have to do to get my stop tightened, everyone? Well, looky there. Not bad. Okay. So with judging by what we're looking at right now, let's get this out of the way so I can teach this and talk. All right. You have a thrust to retrace the thrust. Okay. So you're... Support level is right under here right now. Everybody see that right here where my line's at? Okay, but you've also got a little support level right here. See it? Thrust, retrace, thrust. This is what we consider to be a very aggressive stop. But a lot of times if you just want to hit some, you know, 250s, 300s and all that, don't let them pull all the way back to mid-band. Okay? And you can actually just simply... You know, if you want to, just put your stop right underneath that swing right there if you want to, or this one. Everybody see that? Now, th this is uh, basically really important to grasp on, you know, when you're trading with uh, the way we do our scripts. Because with those lightning swings, you can pretty much tell and especially with the way we've designed the rest of it, like with the mid bands and you've got your predictors and, you know, you can draw your lightning on your chart and everything. It, it, it makes it really, really nice. Okay. Let's say, though, that you weren't even in a trade because I see another one setting up. Everybody see it? Okay. You had a thrust. You had a retrace. And you've had another thrust, right? So, let me ask you a quick question. Wouldn't you think, now Now they've got to thrust up a little higher to, to use the swing, because right now that's just barely above it. But let's just go ahead, and we're flat, and let's see if they don't just come on and kiss right in here, thrust up and pull back. Let's see if they do. Because you're going to see this time and time again on your charts. Now, let me ask you a quick question, too. If you're looking at your charts and in your mind you've got to kind of see what's going on, like what could happen in the future to give an example, right? 
you've got to also look at your uh, lightning three swings. Okay, look at that coming down to kiss that. Now, if you were looking at this in real time, wouldn't you say, you know what? If that even touches above that line, I'm going to fire one like that. See there? It just came and kissed the top of my little swing. Now, where would my stop have to be? Well, right now, it would have to be underneath here. But you also do have a swing here. And see how they respected it? Okay. Everybody see that? Okay, now, notice that we've still got a, a, well, we're getting a green background now. But let me show you why we haven't done a predictor just yet. Everybody see those predictors stepping up? What's the rule of a predictor on the short side, anybody? You pretty much got to be ratcheting down, don't you? And on a predictor to the long side, you basically got to be either sideways OK, you can get around mid band and get these like this, you know, as long as you go sideways and you're still stair stepping, you know, on the phantom to give an example. But as these stair step up, stair step up, see the predictor. And then they quit stair stepping up. That's a lot of times when they change those trends or at least try to. OK, now look at this with the white predictor. The magenta predictor the white predictor again, and then even another white predictor. So that's pretty much telling you as these things do this, that this is not really conducive to, you know, this phantom type trade. Now it was here. Okay. Because you had only done like an ABC. So you could have shorted this here. You know, this is a phantom type trade and you got back down to mid band. Okay. But since we boxed it and it actually did fill us, we're actually looking more at the long side, aren't we? Okay, and our stop would be just right under here. Everybody see that? Now, let's let this play out just a little bit. And I want everybody to tell me if this thing decides to do anything different that you think you should basically look at. Okay, because so far it's heading up pretty nicely, isn't it? Slow in the middle of the night, though. Let me speed it up a little bit. We've only got one on. We're not going crazy with them. Let me get that target out of the way. Ah, too late. Tried to move it, couldn't move it. So let me ask you a question. If you just got taken out of a trade, where's another one? Well, you had a thrust up. You had a retrace. I'm going to draw this manually. That way you don't even have to have lightning, but that way you can see it. As my as my mind sees it, and as your lightning will draw it. So isn't that a trade right there? I think I missed it. Let's see if it'll go down a little bit further. It might. Don't chase it. May not. That's fine. It didn't quite come down to where I want it to, but let's see if it will. Still waiting. So I've got a swing right here. There it is. Everybody see that right there? Now that's an aggressive trade, by the way. So keep in mind an aggressive trade this may work out and may not, but see how that exactly hit where I wanted it to. And then I could tighten my stop. If this was to do a high, a low and a lower high, it could take me out. If it takes out this high here, then we're going to still head up some. OK. Notice we haven't gotten a predictor trade. See how it missed it totally. But see how I still diagnosed my chart, though. And got a trade because I'm looking at those swings. Look, look at, let me just pause this for just a second. Look at what this does thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, right on top of the swing, thrust, retrace, right on top of the swing. Now, does it get any easier than that? See, it's right on top of that swing right there to the left. Thrust up, who knows? We don't know where it's going. But 
Now, let me ask you a quick question on this now. If this was to break, right now you, you would have to break here to go down. Everybody see that? This one isn't topping out of here even yet. I've got my line drawn like it may go up there. But if it doesn't, this is not my swing. This is my swing. Now, let's, let's play it for just a minute and see if we can tell where it is. Because we get these trades all the time. And we'll see if it'll set up. Holding support. Okay, look at there. What just showed up. See that dot right there? Now that dot will tell you that this took a lot to get that dot because that's actually an a priori swing. And that's lightning three. Okay, so what would it take if this was to decide to not go up anymore? And that would be that you would have to basically come down and like touch that a priori swing and get a lower high and then take it out if it does. And then you could actually be short looking for very possibly a phantom trade. Now, when you now keep in mind, this has not ratcheted up enough for me to do that just yet, but I'm always watching that because I watch my lightning uh, three swings. Okay. Your lightning three swings are really important because what will happen a lot of times is that, you know, when they thrust up and they pull back and they thrust again, they'll make these a priori swings. Notice how this one didn't get breached. Uh, the next one that's drawn is right here. We, we don't know if it's going to be breached so far. It's not. Let's see if it goes up any higher. I'll put it on like 500 times. Let's see what just happened there. What, what, what actually just happened just now? It breached my a priori swing. What you're going to see this lots of times because what happens is they don't just move and move and move. See, that made a fresh high. And if you happen to draw trend lines, I saw that with my mind's eye when it hit this one, but I didn't see it when it kind of took it out. But notice how it just hit that trend line, and then it pretty much just cratered after that. Okay. Now, this is where we like to uh, basically draw the boxes, or you've got to wait for the thrust and the pullback. Okay. Now, you do have a phantom trade that has not set up just yet, but this does not mean just like we did in the room on gold on Friday, that you, you can't short something that's below mid-band if, if you want to. But the way I like to personally do it is for it to basically, it's going to thrust down and it's going to retrace. Okay. Now, if you're a gutsy trader, you would just simply box it in. Let me see if I got a region. All right. Box it in. I'd have to break above resistance to actually go up. And I'd probably put, yeah, touch plus two is fine. Let's see if we get anything. Now, keep in mind, when you do this, when it's a long background like this, you probably just want to do like maybe a quick, I don't know, eight or ten ticks. Simply because it could easily bounce off a of phantom also. Now, this is a, what I consider to be a little bit more conservative trade, but where would your stop need to be, anyone, on this particular trade? Now it's fired it. See there? Your stop, if you look at lightning, would be right here. As soon as this closes below this swing. And see, that way you're tightening up a little bit. Okay? Everybody see how you can do that? You can short. Now, this could still be a phantom, and I'd probably buy the phantom unless I was still in my short. Okay, because there's there's traders on both sides of the trades continually to begin with. So, you know, we're short. And it may have not been a smart move, but it did break it. So let's see if it stays with us. You know, I'm willing to give it. That's $110. That'll take away your P&L pretty quick.
Notice this is about 7 o'clock in the morning. This is actually a pretty good time to uh, look trade. I'm going to put exit on close just in case it touch, wicks my line there. By the way, any questions? Uh, just a second. My question log messed up. It was not tallying. Just one sec. I got a lot of questions coming in. Bear with me just a second. Let's see here. What is your swing strength? How many look back uh, bars? Well, Sam, on your question, uh, basically, I would probably do that for 10 ticks by the, right there or at least up to a swing. See how that bounced off Phantom? Usually you want to try to get to mid band. Okay, but this did turn the background red, so this is very possibly going to be an actual short. See how the background turned red? That's what gold did the other morning. I'd probably tighten this stop up just in case. Right underneath there. See how it's trying to make a lightning swing? See your lightning? There you go. It just got you a target. Okay. Now, if you're more of a conservative trader, okay, where would your next trade be on this chart? Anybody? Because it's really already setting up as we speak. See how basically you've got lightning swings, thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust. So right in here is actually your little resistance area. And right here is your resistance area. So with a lower high, you should be able to actually short this if this rolls below this line at 16.28. And, and why do I say that? Because you are getting lightning to the downside and that's a lower high. Okay, so I would probably more than likely take that if it actually closes below that line. It has kissed resistance. You know, that that's what these things do. You know, they're, it's either going to do a phantom and take out resistance and head up. So we'll do it. We'll do it either way. Let's see here. We'll take the break of this right here. So we'll go long or short. If it takes out resistance. You know, it's still got a yellow background, so it could do that. So let's see what it does. Let's see, am I using ABC tops and bottoms, Kenneth? What I personally like to do uh, when I'm trading is I draw those lightning swings in my head. You know, I don't always uh, do the lightning on the chart but you do have the lightning capability right there on your chart I'll, I'll draw it for you so you'll see it i drew it manually but you can see it let me get that region back shouldn't have done that there we go okay draw your lightning up here for instance let's just draw it from here or even here that's fine you know that's far enough up see you have a high a low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So this is actually what I consider to be your swing that would take this thing up if it was to decide to head up. Okay. Now we got another tool on here called Stealth. You could also turn it on because if this does decide to ratchet up instead, it'll have to take out the swing to head up. Right now you've got a red background. So, you know, I've got a feeling we're, we're actually changing trends. We broke lightning. If you draw your lightning three. So you have your high, your low, your higher high. So you broke lightning. So on the left side of the chart, you were heading up, right? And on the right side of the chart, you're getting a high, low, lower high, broke lightning, tried to kiss mid band and pretty much trying to roll over. So I'd be looking for shorts on this. Now, if, if you're not the type of trader that, that actually this is still a little bit risky for you, let's see what it does. It's going to do one or the other for me. Okay, we got the short, so we're fine. All right. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. I forgot to turn these back on. I'll go ahead and do it again. There we go. See there how you're getting lower highs and lower lows? Okay, and we're under mid band. We've got a red background. So we are definitely looking for shorts. But notice how even when we did this over here, we were looking either direction at the time. That's why I boxed it, 
you know, because at that time you didn't know if this was going to break up or if it was going to roll over and break down. That's when we box them. Okay. Now, if you're more of a conservative trader, what's your trade on this chart? Anybody? I can show you because I see it already and, and I see these thousands and thousands of times. Okay. Let's get rid of the lightning. Anybody see the Aperoi swing over there? See the Aperoi swing right there? Now, where do you think it's going to hit its head? Right there. Everybody see it? Short again. See how you boxed it? See how you boxed it? Now, I'm doing this quite quickly. It's going like 500 times, so that's pretty quick. I'll slow it down. Notice how what that did is you've got to draw on your charts. Now, does it mean that they won't go ahead and go through an apriori? Well, draw on your charts in several places like I do in the morning, and you'll actually see that, you know, they hadn't checked this swing either right here. So, see, that's what they did. And they even hadn't checked this one here to the left. So, you draw lines on your chart, and that's where they actually ended up checking. Okay? But that's also why, as traders, see how that predictor it, it was knowing right where we needed to pretty much look at this trade to get in. And, and what we need to do to get in this trade is to look at the thrust, the retrace. Everybody see that? And then it even thrusts up again, just barely. So isn't that your box? Pretty much. I mean, if you're an aggressive trader, your box would be, let me, let me just show you here real quick. If you're an aggressive trader, your box would be like right here because it already hit resistance. So you'd pretty much say, I'm going to just box it in like this. But a conservative trader is going to box it in right here because to stair step down, this has to, to go and break that swing. Because at the time, see, this was actually heading up on a retrace and then it broke support. That's your lightning swing. Everybody see that? Okay. Now, what do you do if you just did this right here and you said, oh my goodness, this thing's dropping like a stone. Okay, what, what do you end up having to do? You have to, to get ready to take it again. But let's, let's diagnose the chart and see if we can figure out before it gets there where we're going to get that trade. So, draw your lightning. If you, if you don't see it in your head, draw it on the chart. There's a swing. Draw your line. There's also an a priori. There's mid band. Okay. So you got three lines drawn on your chart. Let's see if we get some kind of a retrace. Because remember, we're not chasers. If, if you chase trades, they're going to bite you. Believe me. You know, could, could I short this down here? Uh, I don't think I would. You know, now, could it get five ticks or something like that? Very possibly. And I'd probably only try for a very small trade if it did. Because what is this, everyone? This is a thrust. Okay. So let's see. It is breaking it, by the way. I'm not going to take it. Let's see if we get a retrace. This is what these predictors can be really, really good for, is to tell you where these retraces are going. But if you draw on your charts, you're going you're gonna to pretty much know where these uh Trades are retracing to. Okay, now that broke down a little bit further. I could have gotten my five ticks. Okay, let's draw mid band again. Got our swing right here. Now let's look to the left to trade the right. Got another swing right here. Okay, so that's my little sweet spot right in here for this next trade. Let's see if we can get it. Everybody see how I drew on my charts ahead of time? Now look at my predictor. Could I go ahead and take a trade based on predictor? Well, we've got a tool for that. It's called predictor. We're looking for shorts only. And I would look for like a touch plus like two. And with that being on the B button, that would be the bottom of the little predictor. Unless it draws another one and it'll look for another predictor. Let's see if we can get one. 
let's see, how do you get those lightning swings to show on your chart, Charles? I will go over that for you because I want everybody to know how I'm seeing these charts. Because, you know, uh, to give an example, Friday morning, you know, Thursday, all those times, you know, we're getting these things ahead of time. You know, this isn't sure this is replay now, but we draw on these charts in real time because I can tell you where this trade is just based on, you know, where it's going to hit its head. Now, it doesn't mean you just have to hit the button. OK, now there, there it's getting a retrace. Everybody see that? Let's get ready to take the trade, though. Well, we got it set on predictor. Predictor saying right here. Now, if you're you're not comfortable with that predictor trade, because a lot of times they will go up higher. See, I've got my lines drawn, and I could easily go up to this 162440 real easily. Okay, so rather than predictors, I personally like boxing them in. Okay, or uh, if you don't box it in, you've got to pretty much do it with your mind, you know, with with when you see the lightning. Let me let me show you that we turn. We took the predictor, but let's just take a different type of trade. I'm going to watch it. So we have a low, high, higher, low, higher, high. It, it'll draw in a minute. But it has to get a little pullback first to ever draw that swing because there's no swing here yet until it actually decides to draw it. That's two bars back, so it should draw it. Now, that's your box, by the way. See it? Candle down, candle down, took it out. I'd be short on that trade. And I'd probably put my stop just above there, just in case. See see why I took that? Now, that's an aggressive trade, but it's a one, two, three reversal. Now, if you want to take it more in a box break, you know, you're going to see boxes all the time. Let me just show you what a, what a box will look like. It's a little more. There you go. There it is. That's a little bit of a conservative trade. You know, for instance, like if you boxed it in right here. Basically, you'd be doing this and short. Okay, that's that's boxing it in more conservatively, because what's this doing now? You have a high, you have a low, you have a higher high. We don't know if this is a higher high yet because it hasn't taken out the low. But if it does take out the low, then it's a lightning break. In other words, it's doing this. You have a high, you have a low. There you go. Just got it. And you break support. OK, now, if you use touch, sometimes you're going to get whacked. And you got to be careful with touch, but I don't like close simply because, and I do use close quite a bit, but I, I watch the box. You know, for instance, this one, I would still use touch because see this bar closed almost to the end of the box. So you have to wait for the other bar to close. Everybody see that? Let's see. I kill it on 10 tick scalps, but have a hard time holding for 20 or 30 ticks. How does lightning one help me do it? Awesomely. Let me show you how. We've got one left on. Let's just let's just ride it. We'll ride it with lightning. We've even got a well. Let's just, let's just fire for the heck of it. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do this so I can show you how to how to trail this thing and make some money. Now notice how you have lightning two up here. Lightning one would be here. I'll draw lightning one so you can see it too. Alt key. Is it going to draw? Oh, that's uh, shit. Sorry about that. That's the control key. Alt key. There we go. Okay, where's lightning one right now? Anybody? It's right there. See it drawing it? Okay, so couldn't you put your stop there and ride this thing down for the gusto? And watch lightning draw in real time. Now, see, it has to get a little retrace to ever draw it. This, this is a deep, deep push. But you'll see it draw it. Lightning one still, it's it's still too strong. Now, usually when I get this kind of a thrust, I'm no dummy. So, you know, when I see this, there you go. Look at that. That's that's another thrust. That's on a lightning three. But now what are you doing right now? You've got a low, you have a high. You don't have a lower high yet. Now you might see there. So if you get a higher low than taking out this swing, 
then you would be getting that same lightning deal. And you could actually take this off your chart by turning PM1 on and get out of all three contracts if it breaches lightning and that changes to green. That's how you can stay with the trade for a long time right there. Because notice how that just stayed and stayed and stayed. Now you're giving back some on the flip side. There's your lightning. See, if this closes, that'll go green. There you go. Just got out. See, see how that'll actually take you out as a trail stop even? Pretty cool features on it. Okay, now, what do most of you end up doing when you get a really, really good run like this? Do you jump back in and go, you know what? This is a yellow bar probe Gary's taught. I'm going to do three contracts. No, don't do that. Okay, what, what usually happens when you get this? Huge moves like this. It's now 8.50, 9 o'clock. You get that garbagey consolidation, don't you? But while the background is red and the midband is red, you're looking for, well, it's already gone past midband, so what are we looking for, everyone? Phantom trade? Now, could you, though, if you wanted to, does anybody see a trade on here if you're a gutsy trader? If it comes back to here, could I try for 10 ticks? See the little lightning swing, thrust, retrace, thrust. Could I do that? See it hit my lightning swing. I put my stop just under the swing. That's my lightning swing. I'm only risking seven ticks for three contracts, which is about $105. And see how it bounces. Now, we're not in a long trend yet. All I've showed you there how to do was to buy a support kiss and put a pretty tight stop on it, no less. Matter of fact, if this bar closes upward, I tighten this under here anyway, and then we should get our target. Now, that's like I said, is a gutsy trade, but it's based on lightning. I, I teach that trade quite a bit. It's called a kiss trade. Okay, now we may get taken out now. We'll see. We didn't get our target yet, so we're gonna we're gonna risk those couple of ticks and plus the close of a bar. See how it kissed lightning again? You have uh, actually four trends on your charts, but three of them are the absolute most important. The three are Lightning 1, Lightning 2, and Lightning uh, 3. Now, what does this look like to you, everyone? Does this look like a phantom? That's resistance over there to the left. There would be your bar you'd fire it on if you, if you do get a 1, 2, 3 reversal. Now it would be this bar. See it? And it may change trends. We don't care. It looks like it's going up to that swing instead. And I would fire that trade right underneath here. But guess what? We got a tool for that. It's called PM1. Watch and see if it fires it. You got a high, a low, a higher high. So this would should be my little swing to the left. Notice I didn't get a predictor on that one yet. It's already had one. Does everybody see that could possibly be a lightning swing? I mean, a, uh, a phantom. There you go. Now, if you if you just want to scalp phantoms, the smartest thing to do is just go for mid-band. Because, you know, like I say, a lot of times a phantom is actually a trend change. And this, this could very well turn into one you don't know. You know, with those higher lows, we possibly could. But what, let's face it, that was a phantom. That is a an 85%, probably approximately 85% probability trade to go in your favor. Okay, let's see if we can get 10 ticks. Now, I would absolutely tighten my stop, though. And I'd probably even put it right here now. See how I tried to take out that low right there, but didn't close? I'd probably put my stop just above that, just in case. 
because it's kind of counter trend. See how your swing's trying to hold? It didn't hold. Okay. You want to try another phantom if we get it? We're not heading up yet until we take out resistance. But let's see if we can get another phantom. We'll look for lightning. Third candle. Yeah, I would have already gotten it right there on that candle. See, because that's a high candle, rollover candle, and it broke on that candle right there. So technically, you got it close. See there? That's the way you trade those phantoms and everything, by the way. Now, could this actually be, you know, could you play in this range right here? There's a one, two, three reversal happening as we speak. Like that. Could we try for 10 to the upside? Put a nice tight stop. You know, it just depends if you're a scalper or not. Okay. But see see how that did like a little one, two, three reversal? Now, if you wait for lightning, watch it turn if it turns green. It'll turn green if it takes out that little swing right there. This is just chop. And anytime you go into chop, always, always, always scalp it. Okay? And you're going to know you're going into chop unless you get a V-shaped retracement after a run. There, there's practically no such thing as a run that doesn't then go into consolidation. They just do. And usually, you can kind of tell. Let's see if we can tell on this one. I didn't want to do that. I want to do this. Thrust, retrace, thrust, retrace, thrust. So you have a leg one, leg two, leg three, leg four, leg five. That's a lot of times when you get your consolidation. You're, you're really looking for thrust one, retrace. Thrust two, that's your key move right there is your leg three. Okay? And then this is technically could even be like a little bit of a leg one, leg two, and then leg three like this too. But when they retrace above mid-band like this, I consider this to be a leg. So you have basically just like this. Thrust. Retrace. Thrust. Retrace. So how many legs have you had on this? And that's something that, that I learned from a good old pro trader a lot of years ago was you usually look for three thrusts. One, two, three. Now, sometimes they'll do nine. I mean, but if they're going to do that, they're going to respect and continue heading down and Phantom will head down with it. If they start taking Phantom back upward instead, they'll take this thing up instead. Okay. Now, our job trading inside this junk right here is, and by the way, you can trade the predictors inside this junk too. You want to try one? We'll see if it'll work. I'll turn on predictor, short, uh, touch plus two. So that means it would have to touch two ticks underneath the predictor to fire that trade. Let's see if we can get something. Just did. Where would you put your stop on this trade if you took that? Well, I see a lightning swing that hasn't been broken. So, you know, being a, a little bit more of an aggressive trader, I would probably put my stop. That way you're not taking a chance on that trade. Okay. And again, you're just scalping. See there? You're just scalping. Okay. And if you go against the trend, you could actually box in at mid-band again. But if you don't go against the trend, then what you can actually do is just, you know, utilize the predictor. Okay. If you like to box in at mid-band, though, all you have to do is wait for, like, lightning, for instance, or buy it right off the mid-band. We just missed that one. I was trying to show it to you as it was happening. See, that's what you get in chop right there. And if you're trading to the downside, what you want to do is you want to use the white predictors to short. Okay. Now, if this does decide to change trends, and it looks like it might, because see, you have now a low, high, higher low, 
You still don't have a higher high, so you're not changed trends yet. Okay. But does anybody see if it does change trends where your where your trade could very well be though? And wouldn't it be if it breaks it, it'll come back and kiss it? Now this would this looks like to me, this would be another I'm gonna try it. If that candle closes up. Nope, now you can box it. Now you don't want it to take out this swing right here. So see you're just in a little bit of a, a range, so to speak, but you know, when they come down to these mid bands and stuff, you can pop them a quick long. You can pop them a quick short at predictors. Let's try 10 just for the fun of it. Put your stop just underneath the swing. It's identified. Everybody seeing how to use these predictors a little bit? Yeah, now if you get smoked in these deals like this, then don't take them because when it's consolidating, you know what you can actually do? You can actually literally wait for it to break and come back and kiss. Because if this is going to break up, it's more than likely going to come back and kiss a swing. Let's let's turn off lightning and see if it will. Let's get rid of these lightnings, this lightning, this lightning, and our lines. We don't even need our lines. Let's see if we can figure out a trade. If this decides to break resistance, see it breaking resistance. Now, where where will it come back and kiss? Anybody? Got to hurry. It's right here. See it right there. Why there? Because of this. Well, let me draw this lightning two. Well, let's draw lightning one. Lightning one is the one. See how it's got high, low, higher high. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. See how it came back and kissed on top? That's what you're looking for. You know, see it broke resistance. It came back and kissed. And you would put your stop just under the swing. And if it breaks this, you bring your stop underneath here, but not until it breaks this. Everybody see that? Now, on your question, let's see who was asking earlier, Charles uh, W., how to stay in a trade like this. Well, we're in three, but unfortunately, we didn't use our other targets, so we've only got three targets. So we don't have three separate targets, but, but how could you stay in this trade? Well, first off, you could protect once you get some money. Just go ahead and sell if you see a bar close even down like that. Okay, just sell one. Put your stop under here like so and then just ride the runner with lightning okay now watch lightning draw on this chart as it's going up if it goes up now we got a green back a uh, green mid band so it probably will watch lightning draw and you can see right how long to stay in this trade let me speed this up a little bit Okay, see lightning? See lightning right there? So couldn't you, if you're a gutsy trader, put your stop under here and ride this thing for all she'll give because that's a swing that's now identified? Let's see if we get any higher. There's your swing. There's your swing now. If it goes above here, I'd bring my stop up. This is how you can ride them for a long time. Got to get my target out of the way. Where's your swing on this chart now? Well, it's right here, but I don't like it when it does this when you get a real thrust up like that, because that usually means that, that this trade is almost over because they shotgunned it. But now where's your swing? Well, now you have a high, a low, a lower high and this would be your lower low if this decides to take this out see now you have a high low lower high lower low and you're out okay unfortunately that was really close to where I'd get back in though because see that predictor right there I'd probably take a chance on this actually let's do it for only 10 ticks though 
because what are we doing now? We're, we did a nice thrust up. We hit a predictor. We're going to just try to get 10 ticks. Could we do a runner? Sure. That's only doing one contract too, by the way. And I'd put my stop just under there. Because if it takes it out, guess what? It's finished. Okay. And when they're sideways like this, draw on your charts and you will see where your next trade is. Okay. So let's see. Now they broke high, low, lower, high, lower, low. So it looks like we're going to get taken out. Okay. And we did. So let's see where our next trade is. Okay. Well, they just bounced it. I missed it. That was a quick bounce. Must have been some news or something. Now I don't chase them because that would be chasing that trade right there. But could you do it if it did like a lightning, you know, for instance, let's see if it'll come down a little bit further. Maybe we'll get something a little bit better. Okay, let's draw on our charts and see where they haven't checked yet. Got a swing right here. Got a swing right under here too. little sweet spot for a, a minor pullback right in through here. But it looks like we missed it. I think it pulled back already into my lines already. Maybe not. There's a little high. Let's see if it comes into my sweet spot. Not yet. Everybody see what I'm doing? I'm looking at my swings to the left. It's got a high, a low, a little lower high. So we're trying to, trying to head down. But if it takes out this high, we're going to head up. Let's see if we can get a retrace. That's also a double swing sit here and here. That's usually... They'll usually test that. Let's see if we do. There it is right there. Now, that's a little bit of a gutsy trade, but what I did that for is because that's right where it should bounce. And we would call that in room. See how it did? It bounced right where I said it would. Okay. Drawing on your charts is absolutely critical. Do they always come down to predictors? No. No, not necessarily. But if you draw on your charts, you're going to see where those predictors are and how they show up. Let's see. Let me see if uh, – does anybody have any questions on how to see real-time lightning and how to draw it? To draw it, basically, you have four indicators on your chart. Okay, those indicators are lightning one, two, and three, and four. Okay, I've got mine out of kilter. There's lightning three, there's lightning one. Uh, let's see, there's lightning four, and there's lightning two. Okay, so mine are a little out of kilter. But lightning one is simply the alt key. You simply hold down the alt key, don't let it up, just hold it down. And then left click your mouse on a swing. Lightning two is the shift key, and you do the same thing, but it has to be a little stronger swing. It's at least two bars up and two bars down. But you can usually draw it on swings pretty easily. All right, then lightning three is your control key, and it's actually on a four range 15 swing string. So when you draw it, it draws these numbers. So, for instance, if this was to decide to head down, does anybody see where it would? Because if you draw on your charts, you're going to see this in, in real time. This, to me, this is the most awesome scripts out there because you can see it. I'll show you. Now, we don't know if it's going to hit it yet, but we do know where it's at. Okay, you have high, low, higher high. So where is your apparary swing right this very moment?
Now, it could be higher later because this looks like this is still heading up, and that's fine. Okay, but let's let's see if it doesn't do something like this. I'm going to go into 500 times and just see. Look at there. You just broke your a priori swing. Everybody see that right there? You just broke your a priori swing. Now, if you're a gutsy trader, you simply box it in and you put your stop above that wick. You know, for instance, if you saw that and said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and take a short and I'm going to try to get to a phantom. OK, you can do that. And you probably even want to do it under the this was the operatory swing when I moved it in 500 times. So this is where you would have shorted it. OK, see, see what I'm getting at? High, low, higher, high. This would be lightning heading down thrust, retrace, and then it takes out the line. This looks like this would be to me a good short. See it kissing resistance. See it right there? Just kiss resistance. All right. Now, we do have a phantom setting up, though. But what do we do with phantoms, everyone? Phantom can actually be what we call a trend change. And it can also be just a deep retracement. So our job as traders is to basically trade it by boxing it in. Okay. Now, if you box it in, what you want to do is you want to make sure to box it in with lightning. You know, where's your last lightning swing? Well, unfortunately, on this one, your lightning swings all the way up here. All right. If you get a little breakdown again, your lightning swing will be right here. See it? Okay. And it looks like we're going to get our target. We got our target. So that's fine. All right. You want to see if we can get 10 ticks if this does a phantom trade? Now, I'm usually pretty gutsy on this one, so I'd probably already get this. Simply because it hit line two, I'd put a really tight stop on it. Because that really only costs like $12, uh, 15 9 just depends on who your broker is. Now, that was right at resistance. I'll bet we lose this trade. They didn't go for 10 ticks. See it? See if they do. I'm going to tighten it even more. Why am I doing that right there, though? Because it, it hit mid band within a tick. I did not get my uh, trade. You usually try to get to mid band on a phantom trade. Oh, come on. So close. So close. You're just not going to give it to me, are you? And now I put it right there. Now I'm still saving a tick. Not with the exit on close, though. It'll still cost me. Anybody see a trade if this thing breaks down? Anybody at all? Let's see if we can get that. Don't want to give this trade up. It's not looking too good. It's looking more like it's going to head it down instead of up. You can tell by the way the bars are doing. But let me ask you. Yeah, it's going to take us. Anybody see another trade on this chart though if this decides to take us out and if this decides to head down well we're in a in a long from phantom so this this is one of those phantoms that it almost worked out but it looks like it's not going to so it took us out no big deal right all right but do you see another trade if it breaks because you should have your eyes on your chart and already know where your sweet spot is And see if it doesn't come back into that sweet spot. See there? See there? Came right back into that sweet spot. And I drew that ahead of time. Now, I put that on 500 times, so it went really quick. But did you notice how it came exactly? It broke down. It comes back and kisses. And if you've got two of them really close, I usually draw two lines like that and see where you could have gotten that trade. You could have gotten that trade right here because it kissed this one and this one. They checked every single one of them. Okay. Now we missed a good trade on here so far uh, because, you know, it, I had it just going too quick. It's no big deal. Okay. Everybody see how to draw on your charts, though? How to use predictors? Notice how this predictor knew right where this trade was, also. See, it drew way back in here somewhere 
And this drew, and look where it came perfectly to my two lines. Okay. Now, if you were going to take this trade now, I would probably, let's see, you got resistance right there. They just kissed it. Now, if you're a little bit of a gutsy trader, the only way you could do this, it kissed resistance, is take it. Okay. Put your stop nice and tight just in case. Close of a bar. Now, that's chasing a trade. Okay. But the reason that, that I would sometimes do that is simply because this thing is going down pretty mightily. And it's holding micro resistance. See where I drew that line? That was micro resistance. So when it holds micro resistance and you get a little uh, touch back into stealth, that's not a bad trade either. Now notice that stealth actually, you know, just kissed it, plus it kissed an exact swing. That's why I drew that line there. Okay. Now, could I lose on this trade? Absolutely, I could because it's already thrust down. But I've got a very tight stop on it. Okay, and if it breaks and does a little lightning to the downside still, then I'm going to be protected on this trade because I'm going to ride it down with that zigzag. Draw your lightning. Let's draw it from up here. Okay, so our lightning is right there at 1610, 1619.60, pardon me. going to be right here if this closes down see so uh, Charles W on your question from earlier see how easy this would be if you just simply go with lightning because now I can put my stop right there and I'm at least at break even so I cannot lose on this trade with three contracts except maybe a little slippage okay and usually if I see a swing that's really close back see this swing right here and this swing right here, I'll usually go ahead and back it up just one simply because I trust my software and my judgment. And then as it starts heading down, I'll go ahead and bring my stops down with those swings. See, just like that. But you've got another tool with you, and that is, again, that lightning. If it changes green, you can just simply get out of that short. If this goes green. It'll go green if it takes out that swing right there with the close of a bar. I could even move that stop out of the way. We don't even care. Because if this goes green, it'll take me out. Now, don't do that because that's at your broker. And this trade is a market order if it turns green. So, you know, if you lost connection, your stop's way up here. Don't do that. I'm just trying to show you how this will take it out if this turns green. Is it going to turn green? Maybe. If it closes down, it won't. But if it closes up, it'll be green. Closed down, it didn't. No, it did go green. It flattened me. So because it closed right on the line. Okay. So that's a way to ride the trade for the gusto. But also keep in mind that instead of taking them all out, you can actually take out, say, two of them and just ride one. Because this can actually be used as a trail stop, too. You know, for instance, let's say, I'll just go ahead and short again. Not that we would take this. Ah, let's do it a different way. Let's do it with targets. All right, see where you have targets like this and everything? Well, what you can do is you can actually use this meter to just get out of one of those if you want to. Or two. And then I'd definitely tighten my stop on this one, especially if I get in that low. So what's everybody going to do next time when you're trading? You're going to look at the lightning and you can take trades, you know, even against the trend as far as that goes, if you're if you're a quick enough trader. But also keep in mind that as long as these backgrounds are red and the mid band is like a red or a magenta even. You can actually look for see, we haven't had a phantom yet. Let's see if we get one. I'm going to speed it up. We may not get it, but there's your phantom right there. See the break? So if this actually goes below that line again, would you short it? Because what would it be doing then? You have a high, low, higher high. Now you have a high, a low, 
and this bar is trying to go up, this bar did. So now you have a, a high, a low, a lower high so far. But if it breaks this little swing right here, you could actually short that. Okay, you want to see if it does? That's a phantom trade. There, I'm going to take it. See it? Just, just went below that little swing. And you got you another trade, by the way. Okay. Now, a phantom trade, keep in mind, just like I was saying earlier, a phantom trade, you basically want to box in. You don't want to just take it willy-nilly unless you can draw on your charts and you see a real good, like, resistance or support area. Wow, that's really heading down. Where would you put your stop now? Charles W., on your question from earlier, see, see how you could stay with this trade with two contracts? You just simply ride it with lightning and then let it draw lightning again and again and again, and you just keep the trade. If it double bottoms and it, and it heads up, guess what? You can just turn on PM, long, get rid of those two contracts if it breaks that swing. If it heads down here and takes it out, we'll stay with the trade. Your swings right here, lightning. Just hit a double bottom, took it out. Now it took it back out. So you have a low bar, a high bar. Your swing is right here right now, but it could be lower, may not be. If that turns green, it'll definitely take you out. And it just took you out. Okay. Okay. So what would you do now? N now you're looking at another trade. Box it in. Watch predictor. Watch your lightning swings. Your lightning swings right under here right now. You could turn on power meter to go red. Or you could box it. Your box right now is right here. You're still looking for shorts until it takes this out. Everybody sees that, right? Okay, so that's like a like a little medium swing. It would have to go up, come back and kiss and take off. Or we'll be looking for a short if it breaks that little box. Now, maybe, maybe, let's see. Now here, there's your swing resistance right there. I'm going to short that. I didn't wait for the bar to close. I'll put my stop just above the swing. That was almost a phantom trade, but it was a boxed-in trade. Everybody see that? Now, that was a little gutsier boxed-in trade. Your, your boxed-in trade would also be right here, like so. If it breaks this to the downside, then this is your, your box that you could also use. And by the way, you can actually just do this. Hit region. Now we just missed it. Yeah, I might get it. Short out of the region. And I'll add two. Just added because I did touch. And my stop would still be, well, now it would be right here, wouldn't it? Look to the left to trade the right. Move your targets out of the way. Take some coin. Ride a runner. Everybody see that? That's absolutely the, the best way to trade is to watch this little deal right here. I know I ran this over and I apologize, but I did say I was going to run it longer today. Okay. When, when you look at your charts, keep in mind that always... They are doing this. Always. They're doing this. Always. If they're going sideways, they're still doing this. Okay? And if you've got a big enough range, you can still trade it. And using predictors and everything can, can help you to do that. Okay? Uh, let's see. Kenneth says, uh, nice, but I can't get mine working. Which, which doesn't? Uh, Phantom trade, usually a 10-tick scalp, Robert S., I like uh, Phantom to mid-band is really good, and you want to watch it when it gets there. But keep in mind, 
as long as let's just pretend the phantom was down here you know you want to just go ahead and keep writing this as it does this until it gives up the ghost you know when it finally gives takes this out right here you're out how do you start them on which one kenneth oh and the lightning i'll show you let's just kill this we don't care about what prices is and everything all right we're out L let me show you how to do lightning and then we'll probably go ahead and wrap lightning actually comes in the form of lightning one okay lightning two lightning three and lightning four now lightning three and four will always have numbers on them if you use our template the yellow number is the bottom and the green number is the top of a swing on lightning three on lightning four the navy blue and the white is the bottom's white top is navy blue okay so if you were drawing for instance lightning four on this chart you would simply hold your backspace key in and left click okay that draws your lightning four all right let's draw lightning three lightning three is the control key you just simply hold it in and left click at one of these numbers see there now where would you think that if this was to decide to head back up that it would do it well to head up for sure you well here's here's one right here that's getting ready to there's lightning one okay see it breaking a little bit could you box this in above mid band i think we probably did as a matter of fact i think i took this trade after the room closed the other day because guess what even though lightning three is way up here this is still happening on this side of the chart see here right side of the chart you have a high you have a low you have a higher high okay now what if you miss this particular trade the way we teach to box it in you'd have to wait for a retrace right and the retrace is going to come just like it always does and that's going to be more than likely around mid band okay or stealth okay see how i did that one just then now why did i do that one like that right there by the way what if it breaks this swing and that's lightning three could i actually add could i actually add if it breaks that and the answer is yes now could this be a phantom again because this is still a red mid band okay but if you boxed it in both ways you never got your phantom did you see because we see see how it does it it stair steps down then it stair steps back up and it's just doing this stuff constantly and if you miss this trade right here you've got to wait for a pullback now does anybody know where the pullback is going to be on this trade anybody at all you want to draw it on the chart and see if we can get it and then we'll we'll wrap pretty quick okay you've had a thrust pretty good thrust by the way mid band not necessarily mid band though because when these things move you've got to really draw on your charts how do you get rid of the lightning lines you just simply do the the opposite uh control key for lightning three okay alt key for lightning th uh one shift key for lightning two look at that it came right down to my line could you actually if you weren't even in a trade could you enter it really close to right here what do you think well it bounced off support so i would anyway um and then i put my stop nice and tight because i see a swing right there and if they take me out i'll go again down at mid band but see how these constantly do this you know you can draw on your charts and you'll see them come and kiss these swings they were either going to kiss this swing here or where else were they going to kiss anyone on this particular setup it would have been all the way down here because see this thrust up in a big way so when you look to the left to trade the right you got to draw your swings now they could have also kissed this one but this is actually a little smaller but i would have drawn my lines more like this right here about like this right there okay now let's see real quick and then we're gonna wrap because I know this has been a long one 
if you can point out the next trade for me, and let's take it conservatively. Let's let's don't take it aggressively. How far left should you look for swings? I just I like to look to the immediate left, Paul, and I like to look at uh, micro swings, secondary swings, and those uh, medium swings. Okay, if this is going to head up, let's let's just diagnose this chart real quick. Hopefully, we can get the trade. All right, if this is going to continue heading up, they will not take out that swing right there. High, low, higher, high. Definition of an uptrend is higher lows, higher highs, so they cannot take out that swing. Okay? Now, if they take this out, they can't take this one out. Now, are they going to take this one out? We'll find out. See if we can get a retrace trade. That's a double top. They will more than likely take this one out, but not this one predictors saying right here a little sweet spot let's look to the left to trade the right too let's see if we can figure it out before it happens okay the only swing I see is right down here at 1619 but they've already checked it see there they checked it and the other swing is right here see your little thrust retrace thrust is right there and that's higher than that one so I'm gonna say this is my little sweet spot right here. Let's see if it hits it. And I will take it if it does. See it come back and kiss on top, right where, right where I drew my lines. Now, did you notice the reason I drew those lines there? Because I was looking at swings to the left. Okay, I'd probably take some profit right through there. Can you think of a more beautiful way to trade than this? I can show you literally the next trade because I already see it on my chart because I know how to draw on my charts. Anybody see it? What are we doing right now? We, we're, we're waiting for a thrust above this. Let's just pretend you're not in anything. Let's see if it'll thrust up above that. It did, didn't it? See it thrust up above it and come back and kiss it? They, they do that continually. It's just amazing. You know, now notice I didn't fire a trade, but I was telling you exactly where it was going to be because that's what they do. They'll break up. They'll pull back and kiss. You know, you draw on your charts where well, you've got a swing here. You've got a swing right over here on the left side right here. You've got a little swing here, but that's a wick, so it's the same swing. And what did they do? They got in here, and if you did it even conservatively, you could have boxed it in. Or we've got a tool on here that's called Stealth. And see how Stealth got broken right here? It got reinstituted right here on that bar. Everybody see that? Let me get rid of the lines. See Stealth broken, Stealth alive again. It did it on that bar. Right there. That can be another way you can fire a trade, too, that, that'll pretty much come out of these little boxes like that. Okay? Now, looking at your charts, though, and, and then we're definitely going to wrap. Does, does anybody see, if you weren't even in a trade right now, okay, do you see the next trade on your chart? Anybody? Now, if they ratchet up and, you know, for instance, They've already checked this swing right through here. They may not check this one. That looks like a pretty good move to me. But I draw my lines on my charts like so. And I draw my line like so. See the little swing? And if you draw lightning, you'll see it. Okay? So, and mid band's right here. So right this very moment, this is a little sweet spot for a trade. Now, I don't know if it'll get it, but let's let's just see real quick if it does. Bear with me a second. I got to stretch that silly thing. I can't get it to stretch. <laughs> Too small of a box. Let me get rid of it. We'll diagnose it again. All right. We've got a line here, like so, that's an apparary swing. All right. We've got another line right here that is a lightning swing. We've got 
Another swing right here, that's what we call our micro swing. Okay, so if they break this, they shouldn't be able to take out this little swing here. And your sweet spot on this trade would be right in this area right here. Let's see if it is. Pretty darn close, isn't it? Let's see if it'll, I may be out of data, very possibly. But everybody see how to draw on your charts and see where these things are. Now, this was actually more about predictors, and I taught about predictors, but I also taught quite a bit about how to use lightning. And to me, lightning is the absolute key to success in trading, okay? Because you're going to find lots and lots of times that if you just simply draw your lightning on your charts, you're going to get some absolutely monster type trades. And always make sure that you know where lightning is. And if you don't see it with your eye, then draw it. You know, you just got to draw it. Okay, you draw the lightning one, you draw the lightning two. You know, lightning two is right there, right where I drew my line. See there? So if you were trading this, wouldn't you think that hold lightning two? I don't know if anybody's got any more data because I ran out of data, but I'll bet you if you check on Thursday, that probably headed up. It looks like it to me. Okay. Where do you find the training on the trading pa panel? You're talking about Jack the... Uh, Ebook, let me show you. I know lots of people came to this today, and I appreciate that. And I didn't plan on running it quite this long, but I'm here to help. Let me get a uh, Viper Trading Systems member login real quick. Okay, Jack, if you'll go to your member login, members area. All right. And then what you want to do is you want to scroll down to where the webinars start, okay? And these that are in red are your training, and this is your ebook. Now, this ebook, everything that I showed today, if you just simply, you know, scroll down, this is how you set your parameters and everything on Object Trader, okay? And I go through even making sure that you set the four range on Predictor and four range on Stealth. All right, then you go to using the L E S E and R E buttons, auto trading when it's checked, using the mid band trend. This is a little video on that. And this is the most important part right here your object types. Your object types are all those different objects uh, like region and bar close and ray and wedge and all that. And if you want to learn how to use region, to give an example, just simply Activate this video first, that one second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Okay. If you want to know how to use bar close, how to activate a long or a short, or how to use auto bar close, you can videos there using lightning like I did tonight. You can use lightning, by the way, to scale out. You can use lightning on auto to scale out and even reverse if you want. You can use lightning to, you know, get out of a trade completely. Or you could simply, you know, if you had like, say, three contracts, you could scale out of two of them if lightning went against you. Because mi micro lightning doesn't necessarily mean you need out of that trade yet. But it might mean that you need out of some contracts so you don't give a bunch of it back. Okay. So these are just little videos. You just click on them and they'll play the videos. Okay. And on the, the website, by the way, under members, you've got your quick start manual, your comprehensive trading manual. It's about 68 pages. If you ever lose your templates or workspace or even our scripts, they're right there. These are some little JPEGs that show you some of the trade setups on uh, Object Trader. And this ebook, like I say, is I think one of the most important. And then go through this video right here will walk you through A to Z how to use uh, our indicators and Object Trader. But Object Trader's had a lot done to it in the year of 2017 and 18. So I've put a new video, new features in Object Trader, new features part two, and you want to also watch those. Okay. There's a little bit to learning it all, but, you know, the thing is, if a person could learn it all and, 
you know, could, could you guarantee hitting something like this? Not necessarily, but you did see on Thursday that I showed uh, my one up that I'm, what I'm doing is trying to show everybody that it is easy to be able to use somebody else's money if you want to, because I've got my uh, one up within $60 of being funded as of Friday and just showing people how to do it. Okay. But unfortunately I got there quicker than I need to, and I've got seven more days I have to trade. So what I'll probably do is just get my third day in that'll uh, basically cover the consistent trading clause that they have. And then from then on, I'll probably just hit hundred dollar trades and, you know, shut it off. Cause I really don't care once I'm, you know, at their full amount to begin with, because obviously, you know, when I get through their full 15 trading days, it'll be funded anyway. Okay. And the reason, like I said, that I, open that is because we got a lot of naysayers out there. You wouldn't believe some of the emails we get. Well, yeah, you know, you showed your recap, but that's not real trading. Well, I beg to differ with them. We call these trades in the room, live on the charts, and they definitely are, you know, real time type calls, but we're not feeding people. We're not, un unfortunately, we're not liberals and we're not socialists. We want people to learn how to do this on their own. And we want people to learn how to do it on their own because they might trade the European session. They might trade the Asian session. They might trade in the Netherlands. They might not even come in our room. And, you know, we're just, we're the type that we teach. We want you to learn. Okay. This was recorded. Uh, it was recorded for all, Robert, on your question. And I, that's the way I look at it too, Paul. Let them talk. You know, they can even write up deals or whatever they want. Uh, what amazed me is one that did write up something on us. If you actually look at their video, it shows we called the trades perfectly. You know, they just got kind of tickled because we said phantom trade or, or predictor trade and all that type of stuff. I just say, you know, get a life. But the whole thing is that, you know, we are the real thing and we teach people how to see these trades in real time. We've, we've got even new people that can hit 500 and 1,000 a day. Uh, let's see, Chris, what was your other question? Lewis, I didn't see yours. Let me look. Uh, does it matter when you trigger your lightning in terms of support and resistance levels? Well, what you're doing, Lewis, is you're just drawing it at a particular point. You know, for instance, if I wanted to draw lightning from way down here and do my lightning too, I just hold shift key and click. See there? Or if I wanted to just do lightning from here, I just hold shift key and click. Does away with all this. You know, because you really don't care about much except what you're trading. Okay, but you can make it come and go just by simply hitting the button. You know, just that's that's the shift key and that's your lightning two. If you wanted lightning one, you just hold your alt key and that's lightning one. Okay, and lightning one is no more than really just the four range bars doing the little zigzag motion. You know, could you short this through here? Well. Yeah, you can. And a lot of people do because a lot of people are scalpers and they see these areas broken and lightning changes the other direction. They short them and get five, six, seven ticks. Okay. And what was the other question, uh, Charles, on your question? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, can you talk to me after the webinar about the problem you had loading scripts? Sure. Sure. Okay. Anybody have any questions? This was a definitely a long one and I apologize for it being quite that long. Well, keep in mind, Lewis, Lightning 3 is larger swings. You're not really trading Lightning 3 as much as you're looking at it for trend. Okay. Because, you know, Lightning 3, to give an example, if you draw it, like right now even, control key, that's your Lightning 3. You see, you haven't even gotten another number yet. So you have a low, you have a high, higher low, higher high. You don't even have a higher low yet. Okay. So more than likely, uh, they'll probably even pop this line even way up into here before it's over. Okay. Hope everybody enjoyed this. We try to build the best product out there and we also definitely do call the trades in the room. All right. Everybody have a nice day. Anybody has any questions? I will be around today and uh, we're closed on Monday. Okay. And it really, it'd be best not to trade on Monday. It's going to be choppy. People aren't going to be around. All right. Thanks, everyone. Again, apologize for the longer webinar. Bye, everyone. Thanks.